Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got in this video is the Viltrox 85mm f1.8 version 2 lens. Now this is a full frame E-mount lens, and it's very affordable considering what you're getting. You're getting an 85mm prime lens with a fast f1.8 aperture that covers a full frame sensor. So this can be used on the Sony a7R, a7R 2, 3, 4, a7, you know, series, A9, things like that. Now they updated this, so it is a version two, so it's even lighter weight, and the optical quality is pretty darn good, as you will see in this review. What I also wanna go over is how it compares to the Sony 85 millimeter F1.8 lens, which is about $200 more. The Viltrox goes for $400 US, which is very affordable, and the Sony is $600. Now, I'm gonna go over some of the differences between the lenses. I'm gonna do lab testing, and then of course, real world testing, and uh, let's just get right into it. So here's what it looks like in my hands. And again, this, this lens feels pretty darn lightweight for the size of it. I would expect it to be heavier. It actually weighs in at about one pound or 485 grams approximately. Now the Sony lens is actually a little bit less weight. It's about 13 ounces and 371 grams in comparison. And this lens actually has a 72 millimeter filter thread whereas the Sony has a 67 millimeter filter thread. Just to give you an idea of the size difference, I don't have the Sony lens in hand with me right now, I apologize, but I did review that lens a while back and I have lab sample photos and things like that that I will show you just to compare. So, you know, the build quality looks pretty good on this lens, it feels pretty sturdy. Um, the focus ring, however, is pretty tight. It's definitely a lot tighter than I would like. Um, it's very smooth though, and it may loosen up with time and, you know, lots of use, but straight out of the box, it's definitely a tight ring for sure. And it's got nice metal on the back there. As you can see, it's pretty darn good build quality, I would say. Now I'm testing this lens using my older Sony a7R. Now this is a much older camera. It only has contrast AF, so the autofocus isn't fast at all on the a7R, but I'm also going to test it on the Sony a6400 I have, which I'm actually recording with right, right now. So to do more advanced autofocus testing, I'm going to strap this on to the a6400, which I'm currently filming with, and I will also get some sample photos with that camera, but I, I wanted to do full frame coverage, and this is a killer 36 megapixel sensor in here. So the image quality is fantastic off this camera, even though it is older and not as good for autofocus. Now, as far as autofocus goes, this does have an STM stepping AF motor, which is pretty darn snappy and fast after testing it on the A6400. For video, however, it's not quite as good. It does make a little bit of noise. Another cool thing about this lens is it has a USB port on it right here. See the USB port? So you can actually update this lens when firmware updates come out. So that is a nice feature for future updates when it comes to compatibility and things like that. Um, autofocus algorithms might improve over time. So this lens has a minimum focus distance of 2.6 feet, approximately 80 centimeters, which is the same as the Sony 85 millimeter. The Sony does, however, have a focus hold button on the side and an AF-MF switch, autofocus manual focus switch, on the side of the lens. This lens does not have that, just so you know. It also has a pinch style lens cap, as you can see here, and a nice pedal lens hood, which uh, definitely does a good job overall, I would say. So on the A6400, or a crop factor camera, this is going to work out to 127 0.5 millimeters effective range just so you're aware let's get over to the lab real quick and i will show you how it performs there and i'll show you how it perform how it compares to the sony 85 f 1.8 lens as well and then we will move on to some real world photos and wrap this review up all right so here we are in lightroom and i just wanted to go over this lab testing quick so 
I, first thing I noticed right out of the gate is how contrasty this lens is. It's got a lot of punch to it and it's not washed out. And that's gotta be due to the nano AR lens coatings that are applied. So that is a nice treat to see like that punchy contrast because honestly I expected this to be much more washed out. And this is straight off the camera using the Sony a7R. So I could obviously apply more contrast by doing tone curves and you know jack up the vibrance or whatever you might want to do but this is just straight off the camera lab testing I wanted to show you first so let me just move that over there alright so here's what we got so this is at f 1.8 and you can see up here on the top left that is going to be the XF data so you can see how I had the camera set up using a sturdy tripod and now if I zoom in to one to one you can see just how sharp this lens is and you know how well controlled this lens is as far as the you know fringing and things like that purple fringing on the high contrast coins and also sharpness on the crayons in addition distortion control is very well controlled on this lens as well and it's sharp even in the corner areas uh, the sharpness is quite good in my opinion as you can see here wide open at f1.8 so I was very impressed with the results there. The bokeh ball renderings look pretty good as well. They are, they are not perfectly round, but they're pretty close. And as we stop it down to f2.0 here, you can see it uh, brightened up just a little bit as far as the vignette goes. The vignette is the darkening in the corners that you get with uh, fast you know, prime lenses. You're always going to have a little bit of vignette. So it's not too bad, but it is noticeable. And then when we stop it down to f2.8 here, you can see the bokeh balls. They start to octagon just a little bit. It's got the nine blade rounded aperture diaphragm, but when you stop it down, it does start to octagon that little bit. And they're not perfectly even, but they still look pretty good. I do see a little bit of green around the bokeh ball, um, but nothing really that's that big of a deal. And as far as sharpness goes at f2.8, you can see here, it's exceptionally good. It did crisp up a little bit compared to f1.8 for sure, and uh, now it's looking pretty darn tack sharp, even in the corner areas, uh, but particularly on the dollar bills. So let me just step it down a little more here. We're looking at f4, and you can see what the scene looks like as we stop it down. And again, sharpness across the board is excellent. And this is with the 36 megapixel A7R on a sturdy tripod and that's at f16 so the aperture goes from f1.8 all the way to f16 it does get a little bit softer at f16 due to diffraction and things like that but f11 is holds up really well and f8 is exceptionally sharp for sure so overall lab testing i would say is pretty good i do notice the bokeh balls are a little odd shaped here as you stop it down more and more uh, we'll see that in more detail in a second when we go to the minimum focus distance testing, which is right here. So the minimum focus distance on this lens is about 2.6 feet or 80 centimeters. So this is as close as I could get to the quarter due to the minimum focus distance. So this is what you can expect to see if you're trying to get as close as you can to something. So when zoomed into 100%, I just did 100% crop here, so it's easier. So this is 100% crop, and you can see just how good this looks and on that high contrast quarter it really does look great there is a little bit of fringing a little bit right here you can see just that little bit of purple but not much at all to be honest with you and I was pretty impressed with that and now when we stop it down here's f2.8 so there is a little bit of fringing here you can see on the quarter a little bit of orange fringing it looks like it's not really purple or anything or green uh, it's more of an orange um, now stop down again to f4 you can see the bokeh balls starting to octagon out they have a little bit of a green halo around them but nothing really that bad at all to be honest with you not too concerned about it and looking here we're at f5.6 and here you could really notice the bokeh balls are kind of oddly shaped they're not like perfectly round they they uh, they are starting to octagon a little bit but notice the uneven edges so that is a result of the aperture diaphragm, I believe, not being 100% perfect when it comes to, you know, making this perfectly even. You know what I'm saying? And here you can see it again. They're not perfectly round. They just have a little bit odd octagon shape to them. So that's worth noting. Really not the biggest deal in the world. And you're really only going to notice that when you're doing something like this, you know. This is like a lab test, you know. So 
Um, if you're wide open at f1.8, which most of the time you will be when doing something like this, you're not really going to notice that, and it looks really good in my opinion, but when you stop it down, you do get this kind of weird bokeh ball shape. So let me just show you quickly the Sony 85mm f1.8 lab pictures. And notice here, now that's not the same lab scene because I did this review quite a while back, but notice here that um, this is at the minimum focus distance. You can see the bokeh balls are also pretty round here in the center, but there is a curvature out here on the edge. And I believe that's due to the lens just being smaller and, you know, 67 millimeter versus 72, for example. So there is just that little bit of curvature when it comes to the bokeh rendering on the Sony lens. I actually like the way that looks. I think it looks cool. Um, it kind of brings the eye in towards the center area, towards the subject in an example like this. But as far as sharpness goes, let me just go to one to one. You can see that the Sony lens is also very sharp and very little fringing as well. And when you stop it down, you can notice that the Sony bokeh balls are also a little bit not even. You know, they're not perfectly round. They do have a little bit of an odd shape as well, but not, they're more round, let's say, or more even than the Viltrox lens for sure. Um, the other thing that I notice about the Sony lens is it's much more washed out. There's not near as much contrast. So the lens coatings on the Viltrox are definitely noticeably better as far as the punchy contrast goes. Of course, you can just add contrast and make up for that with a tone curve and things like that, but it's nice having that punchy contrast straight off the camera. And when you stop it down, this lens actually goes all the way to f22, unlike the Viltrox, which stops at f16. Um, but this is definitely more round bokeh balls than the uh, Viltrox goes. Now, as far as sharpness, again, the Sony lens is very sharp and you can't go wrong with this lens. The Sony lens is also definitely better for video and high speed sports photography because it has dual linear AF motors, which are faster and quieter and a little bit more accurate than the Viltrox. However, do it during photography, the Viltrox was very accurate in my testing using the Sony a6400. IAF worked and it really did perform excellent in my opinion, but for video, not quite as good. There was a little bit more hunting, um, a little bit more of a delay to locking on the target I noticed, but it still worked really good. Um, I'm just kind of being a little bit nitpicky to be honest with you. But anyways, when we stop the Sony lens down here, you can see it uh, holds up pretty well. And again, the sharpness on the Sony lens is very good. And it also has very little fringing. Just like I said, the, the most noticeable thing was the contrast difference. Alrighty, so first I'm going to go over the Sony a7R real-world photos. You can see those here. And then I also have a bunch of real-world photos from the a6400. So let's go over the a7R photos quick. And I'm just going to go through these quick, guys. Like I say, the, the EXIF data up here uh, on the top left, so you can see how the camera is set. And I just basically went for a hike with my kids and took some photos having some fun and you can see this lens really does an exceptionally good job in my opinion in the real world even on my slower autofocusing a7r it was nailing the focus on the faces and the depth of field is nice and creamy contrast is nice and punchy and i just was having a really good time using it and again layla just holding up a little weed there you could see just how good this lens actually is in the real world and this is in harsh lighting conditions too. We were kind of sweaty because we were hiking and stuff. And just look at the punchy contrast on these flowers, nice and green and rich color. The Sony lens, for example, this, these would look a lot more flat and you would have to jack up the contrast to get it to look like this straight off the camera. Again, just very nice and creamy. And here's just one of Layla standing there for me so you can get an idea of what it looks like with varying backgrounds at varying distances, isolating the subject and giving you that 3D you know, rendering that you might want for your portraits. And that's basically what this lens is ideal for, is portrait photography, in my opinion. Look at this cool shot. And, you know, again, detail is pretty darn good. Contrast, clarity. You can see that sharpness right there is exceptionally good. And there's no fringing or anything like that in these high contrast white leaves. Here's just a shot of the water tower. And I wanted to show you this because of these, the high contrast area right here on the railing. And you can see how sharp and well-controlled 
the lens is. It, uh, it's really a very high quality optic as far as sharpness and, you know, fringing, flaring and things like that. Now here's a quick depth of field test on the fence. Check this out at this angle. And then this is just a slightly different angle. And here's another angle. Just so you can get an idea of this depth of field fall off effect you can get with a lens like this. And uh, really good in my opinion. And here's just another shot. This is actually shooting through a fence. So the contrast isn't really that good. But here's what it looks like when I put the camera above the fence. So above the fence you get more clarity. Um, through the fence, you could see the fence is gone. It virtually disappeared, but um, you know that's you do lose a little bit of contrast when shooting through the fence. So above the fence, you could see it's definitely a little brighter and so forth. But I just wanted to show you that you can get great results um, shooting through a fence as long as you're close to the fence. Here's another one of Layla. She wanted to put the flowers in her hair. She thought it would be a pretty shot, and you can see again fantastic clarity, sharpness. Uh, across the board in my opinion. This is direct harsh sunlight, which you know isn't really the ideal lighting conditions. And you can see Jace here playing on the dirt. Uh, he was getting really dirty and sweaty. Um, we were having a good time though. We were making trails for our bikes and stuff. And here's one of Layla. Just took a picture of her foot here. And um, again, just that depth of field is pretty sweet in my opinion. Another one of Jace. Zoom in here so you can see the detail. It's really good in my opinion. And just a couple of flowers here. And there's just a weed. Jace had a bunch of dirt in his shoe and he was cleaning it out. Here's a couple more of Layla. And again, I'll just zoom in here so you can see the detail. And as you can see, the detail is fantastic and that depth of field is extremely shallow. As you can see on her eyebrow here and eyelashes, extremely narrow depth of field. I was close to the subject on a full frame camera and look at that background. It just butters out and it looks fantastic. Now this one, I really actually like this shot, but I missed the focus. So the eyes are not sharp. It actually focused on like the eyebrow or something or her nose. I don't know. Like I said, the A7R isn't the greatest for autofocus performance. And this is just a tree. Now here I just wanted to show you what it looked like shooting into the sun. It did bite into the contrast a little bit, so it did wash out a decent amount due to the sun flare effect. But overall contrast is pretty good, and fringing, even in this super high contrast area, is pretty well controlled. I do see some purple up here on, you know, in this corner. There is a purple fringe line there, but that is pretty easy to fix in Lightroom by using the lens correction. And here's just a picture of this amazing beer at my brother's house. He got this cool glass here and uh, I just thought this was a cool picture of the way the background renders and so forth. And here's another picture of Charlie. This one I actually brought into Photoshop and spent a little time editing just so you can see what an edited shot looks like. All I did was brighten up the eyes a little bit and sharpen them a touch. I didn't really do too much but I thought it came out great and uh, you know my brother really loves the picture of his dog. This is Chippy, little uh, feisty little dog. And you can see this one came out pretty good. It's not razor blade sharp, but the shutter speed was at 1 100th of a second, and this dog moves so fast. Here's another one of Charlie. And you can see here, just look at that sharpness, clarity, contrast. Again, direct sunlight, and you can see the white fur rendered really well. It didn't just blow out and lose all the detail. And here's just another one of Charlie. Um, Charlie actually saw something. It was like in hunt mode, you could see in her eyes. <laughs> Now here's just another one of the sunset. I thought this came out pretty good as I was leaving my brother's. I took this photo and again, just really, really nice colors. The rendering came out pretty darn good in my opinion. Now let me show you a couple with the Sony a6400, which has far superior autofocus abilities. Now I took a couple of pictures of these beers here. I'm actually working on some other projects. So I've been taking some pictures of uh, these IPAs and things like that. And you can see the background bokeh ball rendering is quite good. The separation and depth of field play that I'm getting on the uh, these product shots, if you want to call it that. Here's one outside. So you can see how this renders outside. And it looks pretty darn good, in my opinion. Nice and dreamy. Smooth background. And here's just another shot of a flower. And again, you can see the rendering is really good, in my opinion. There is a little bit of fringing here I see on this one blade but overall very well controlled. 
And here's my friend Abraham. We just went for a little walk. You can check out the sharpness. It's incredible. Depth of field play on this lens is fantastic. And here's just another one with the water tower behind him. And here's just like a butterfly shot that I got. And I was just trying to get closer to it before it flew away. There's another angle. Then I got nice and low. And this one I actually played with here in Lightroom to just jack up the colors a little bit and the contrast and the sharpness. And here's another one that I edited a little bit. I just fixed some of the spots on the wings. And you can see it came out pretty darn good. And here's a picture of a bee on a flower. Again, it focused on it no problem. I actually used a touch to focus. And it just nailed it. Did a really good job. A couple more flowers. This is just a depth of field play type of shot. I always like to do this to show you how this works. You can see in the foreground it's out of focus. I focused on the hydrant and then the background is out of focus. So you can see how that renders and uh, the results I thought came out very, very good. I was very happy with that. And just some tiger lilies or whatever these are called. Here's just an exit sign. I thought the background depth of field rendering would be um, a nice contrast view here. And there's just another beer. So that is pretty much it for the real world testing. And as you can see, this lens performs very good, in my opinion, on the a6400 and the a7R. All right, guys, so as you can see in this review, the Viltrox 85mm f1.8 version 2 lens is a really good lens for the money, in my opinion. $400, you're getting a good product. It's pretty well made. Like I said, I had a couple of nitpicks with it. The focus ring was definitely a little tight. Um, wasn't the biggest fan of that, but it did make it a little bit easier to fine-tune than some super loose manual focus rings but other than that you know the bouquet balls were a little bit not so consistent when stopped down um, which was noticeable when compared to the sony 85 millimeter f1.8 lens that lens is 200 dollars more however it does work a little bit better in video it does have a little bit faster autofocus due to the dual linear focus motors but that with that being said the viltrox was very snappy in photography mode in video mode it didn't work quite as good um, as the Sony in my opinion, but it still worked pretty darn good. So again, depending on your budget, you know, um, and another thing worth considering is the Sam Yang makes an 85 millimeter f1.4 lens that also goes for about $600 right now. It's got $100 off and that lens is definitely heavier. It's 1.25 pounds. So it's a little bit heavier. It's got a 77 millimeter filter thread. So it's a bigger lens, but that f1.4 aperture will provide even more awesome background bouquet separation and rendering. And that lens also has dual linear focus motors. So I have never used that lens. I haven't had my hands on it, but based on the reviews I've seen, uh, it looks like a really high quality lens, especially for the money compared to the GM 85 millimeter F1.4 lens, which is very expensive, for example. So if you're on a budget and you're looking for an 85 millimeter portrait lens, you can't go wrong with the Sony 85 millimeter F1.8 lens. Be sure to check out my review of that. I will link that at the end of this video. Um, but again, the Viltrox is a good option in my opinion. I enjoyed using it. And as you can see, the results speak for themselves. You can get fantastic photos with this lens very easily. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So if you could save $200 and you're not interested in video or high speed tracking, for example, then you, you certainly consider the Viltrox in my opinion. I was happy with it. Um, for up to me, I would honestly, I would rather have the native Sony lens just because, you know, Sony tends to work better with Sony. Uh, the sharpness is pretty much equal on both lenses, but the Viltrox definitely had better contrast. So it, it's really a kind of a toss up. I definitely like the better contrast on the Viltrox compared to the Sony. But um, as far as the video and the high speed tracking go, I would probably rather have the Sony in that regard. Um, I do do a lot of video though, so I'm a more video oriented user. So that, that is a priority of mine. If, if you're not into video, um, then again, $400, you're really getting a very good lens in my opinion. All right guys, so that is about it for this video. Please be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you thought this was a good video and you got what you wanted out of it. Also, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified of my next video as it comes out. So I will catch up with you next time. Have a great day and uh, be safe out there.